when you're on a boat with two people, sometimes you need to go separate directions. A dinghy for one, a paddleboard, a kayak, an XYZ for the other. Get yourself an escape plan. I think what she's saying is we have disagreements sometimes. I don't know. I'm not very good at interpreting these things. If you didn't have a paddleboard, you wouldn't be able to get off the boat when your husband was spazzing out. And if you didn't have a kite, you wouldn't be able to kite away from your wife when she was telling <laughs> you to do boat work. I hope you enjoy this episode. It's a little compilation of our favorite gear. Some of it's sponsored now and some of it we bought. You'll be able to tell the old gear we bought ourselves. <laughs> Anyways, enjoy. This is our dive compressor. Can you, can you hear me? Hold on, hold on, wait. Woo, that is loud, man. This is our dive compressor. This is how we uh, go diving out here. It's about, probably about 10 years old. It's quite old. And I'm just trying to fill some dive tanks before the next squall line rolls in. Basically, this is a gas powered cold tree sub. Uh, it just simply has a little air compressor on this side and then a little Honda powered engine on that side. We try to run this uh, at night because it's cooler and during the day, if I have to run it during the day, I put a uh, sheet over the dive tanks to keep it a little cool. You're not supposed to fill dive tanks in the sun, but I don't have a choice. It's been raining like nonstop. And part of this genius setup is 15 liter steel tanks. These are huge tanks in the dive industry. These friends of ours have called these dive station refill tanks. They allow us to stay down really long and we can almost get two dives in on these if we really want to. So we don't have to run our cold tree sub every single day. The cold tree sub is really reliable. Um, this one is really old. It's got a lot of rust on it, but I've replaced the belt. I replaced the air filter. Uh, previous owner replaced the gauge, the air gauge. So it's kind of works and it's cheap. We picked it up for a thousand bucks. Hey, why not, right? everywhere that we get a ride our bikes. But when we do, it's freaking awesome. Errands take half the time, man, half the time. They're a little worse for wear. You gonna tell everyone my code. If you ever find my bike, now you know my code. Bikes are one of those things where it makes errands so much faster. You can like pop out, grab some parts, come back to the boat. And like taxis are a lot of money sometimes. And, and we brought them from home, man. They came all the way from Canada. These are our old bikes from when we used to actually, you know, have jobs. Bikes take a beating out here on the water and like our brakes squeal. These bikes could really use some work. We're uh, we're not bike mechanics. We've been Googling a bit, but uh, so far I still don't have a very good brakes. Not sure what to do about that. I have two brakes that squeal. I got 1.2 brakes, I figure. Do you have any gears? I have all my gears. Yeah, to yeah. the next, next errand run, here we go. Back home. There's two things about equipment. One, you're traveling sometimes in very remote areas and you wanna have the right kind of equipment to get you there. And two, it's kind of your fitness out here. So you wanna make sure that you have tools to help you stay fit because magically it doesn't happen on a boat. The days of thinking that it's actually hard to sail around the world are over. When we're on passage, if you don't do anything, you get very, very like wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing now? In the tropics, we basically hide from the sun all day long. We're either under this hard top, we're inside, we're under palm trees. And when we're not, we're putting on sunscreen. I'm actually quite allergic. I get like my eyes go puffy, I get rashes. So I'm obviously I'm allergic to something in them. Pretty strong chemicals in sunscreen. So I've been experimenting with zinc and I found this zinc. Uh, it's called invisible zinc and it's actually brown. When you put it on, you don't look like a white, you know, I don't know what you call it, like Halloween figure. You actually can't tell and it works really well. The other one that we put on when we're, specifically when we're going kiteboarding is this. This is uh, a stick of white uh, zinc. Put it on and then smack your lips together. And you're done. 
<laughs> it's a beautiful morning in Palau. Check this place out. We're in the Rock Islands. The Rock Islands are these millions of little green mounds, rock mounds. <coughs> Terrible. Yeah, the trade winds don't fill in until a bit later. <gasps> There's like no one here, it's crazy. Flat, calm, it's perfect paddleboarding place. So we love our starboard sup. Our last one lasted so long. I think we bought it in like 2000 or something. Like it was it was ancient technology. Jonathan hooked us up uh, from Epic Board Sports in Florida. This one's gonna be different. You'll have to wait and see what it's gonna be. But check out this freaking bag it came in. It's got wheels. It was just the sweetest thing to, to pack. One thing we love about, I love about Starboard is their commitment to the environment. And they've changed the way they make these boards. They don't glue the seams, they, they weld the seams. That takes away all the nasty glues that go into, you know, making these boards. And then they do cool things like, oh, this thing. Stuff like this. It's a, it's like a trash bag, so you can carry it with you when you're paddleboarding and pick up floating garbage and debris and all this crap that floats in the ocean. These starboard subs are the stiffest subs that we have ever seen. It has two chambers, and this middle chamber is to stiffen it up. Woo! Do you hear the echo? Let's do that again. Can you finish it for me? It's not that hard. I can, look at this. Look at this, I can stand on it. It's like, there's nothing underneath. Seriously, with our last one, if you, if you put any pressure on it like this, it would kind of bend in the middle. That's intense, this is awesome. The best thing about these paddle boards is the way they go in the water. You ready? Yeah. Oh, it's not bad. <laughs> Stop your moving, buddy. Look up, look up, you gotta look up. Well, it's you, Gord. Come on, just tip it. You're so tippy, it's outrageous. Where are we going? Bring what you love, you know? That's, I think, the key is that what do you love to do at home? What do you want to get into? What you're curious about, and then, and then maybe talk to your local retailer or check out the links down below. Start a conversation. If you're, if you're interested into kiteboarding, you can start doing that now. You can start taking lessons now. If you're into stand-up paddleboarding or curious about it, you can get into that now. And, and I think it kind of gets the stoke going. Like it gets that fire building of the life you're actually going to be living. Yeah, just go do it. Just so you know, when you learn to kiteboard, you drown for like three days. Yeah. So don't let the first three days influence your decision that kiting sucks. Try it for at least five days. All right, it's kite day. Wind's up. Let's go check out what Ben's doing. <laughs> we've run out of space. We've got kites, we've got a spinnaker that, I don't know where that's gonna go. We've got a lot of kites. We got like a seven, an eight, a nine, a 10, 12, 14, 16, spare eight. We go kiting in anything over about 10 knots. 12 is ideal over 12 because under 10, usually there's a rescue that happens with somebody ending up a little further downwind than anticipated. It was an eight meter day for a few seconds there, but it looks like it's back to a 12 meter day. Yeah, 12 knots and up is our sort of sweet spot, but with the new foil uh, we're trying to get that that level down because a lot of times a lot of these places in it kind of sits around 10 12 knots you know that locker it seems like magic when stuff just magically appears out of it it's like Harry Potter in their magic camping bag and that's kind of the beauty of a catamaran it's a really good playing platform so this is Ovitel uh, you can check it out on Google Maps too but Ovitel is awesome because you can download it and then when you're offline like we have no internet right now we can still check it out this is how we find our kite spots uh, they're not written down anymore there's no one else kiting out here it's just us and the satellite map and then we just look for a, a spot that's in the clear path of wind but still protected enough for the boat to be comfy to live on. So this island right here is blocking the wind. We're in the wind right now on our boat but it's a little bit buffeted because of these two islands up here. We were thinking we could either boat launch here and have lots of room for kiting but we checked out this beach and this beach has like good clear wind. The other island we've scoped out a bit is this one over here. And look at it, it looks pretty cool. So today we're gonna head to the beach. So we're gonna show you some of our kites and uh, head out for a, a bit of a session.
It's full of crap that's good and keeps us and not keeps us at entertained isn't quite the right word, but that keeps us going up here. That keeps yeah. us fit. It keeps us keeps us moving yes. every day. You want some. You want to have a tool so you, you're not sitting here going, well, "What should I do today?" It, I think it immerses you in this water life in the full sense. Yeah. Like you're using the wind. You're under the water. You're playing on the beach, using all the elements to your advantage and you're playing in this huge playground 